Hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to show you how to improve the performance and make your iPhone a lot faster, guaranteed with just a few simple tricks. Now, this is part two. Part one will be linked in the description, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this video. Now, as always, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates, of course, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode. Now the first thing I would like to talk about is something that I see many iOS users do for whatever reason and that is use a low power mode all day no matter how much battery life you have left on your iPhone. So I see this happen a lot throughout the iOS community and this is a major problem because this could be the reason why your iPhone feels slow, sluggish, and the performance in the network isn't as it's supposed to be because of course low power mode is designed to kick in when it's 20% battery life to help you get through the rest of your day, right? Therefore, slowing down, throttling your iPhone's performance, slowing down the network performance, even shutting down some of the features on your iPhone entirely in order to preserve batteries. So if you're one of those users that are constantly using low power mode all day just to make your battery life last even longer, you could be making your battery last even longer, but you're also hindering the performance of your iPhone entirely throughout your entire day. So this could be one of the reasons why your iPhone may be slow if you use low power mode all day. Now this next one has got to be one of the number one mistakes I see iOS users do every single day. Now this one has to do with with the app switcher and I know sometimes this can be something that most users can't even avoid is just have it at this point you see an application in the app switcher you close it out for example I have Safari here open and then I just close it out just close all my applications out in order to get better performance for my iPhone and that is entirely wrong because your iPhone actually just freezes the application in the background so when you're ready to use it again it will pick up where you left off. If you close it out, the application would just load entirely. As you see that, we go to close Safari here and then go back into Safari. See that it's reloading the entire website, which is using more resources, more battery, more performance from the network and CPU performance as well. So what you want to do is you want to launch the application, close it in the background. And when you launch it again, using the app switcher, it just picks up where you left off. And this will help you get better performance, better battery life, and overall a better user experience on your iPhone. Keep in mind, iOS is designed to work this way so you don't have to really just go into the app switcher and start closing all your applications out. I know sometimes is a habit but this actually impacts the performance of your iPhone. Now this next option I want to talk about is called optimized battery charging and clean energy charging. So under the battery section here of your iPhone if you go into the battery health and charging as you can see I have these two options turned off. I have the optimized battery charging and the clean energy charging turned off. Now these two options options are great options for your iPhone's battery health overall and of course for the environment as well. Apple is trying to charge your iPhone when there's clean energy in your grid by just charging your iPhone when that energy is available and optimized battery charging works alongside it in order to predict when you're going to pick up your phone before it starts charging from 80 to 100. So basically if you don't have a regular schedule this could actually impact your battery percentage so when you pick up your phone it may be at 80 instead of 100. So if if you're one of those people when you pick up your iPhone every day you see that it's charged at 80% and has been charging for hours then this may be the reason is because your iPhone is constantly trying to predict when you're going to pick up your iPhone in order to charge that additional 20% so I recommend if you don't have a regular schedule where you go to bed at a certain time and pick your iPhone every day at a certain time turn these two options off in order to get that 100% battery charge on your iPhone to keep going for your entire day now if there's storage that you're looking to get back onto your iPhone is one of your main concerns these are two things you can do right away in order to get more storage back onto your iPhone the first thing you need to do is jump into settings go into general go into iPhone storage and you'll see a few recommendations here right away so you see this it will take a few seconds in order to load and populate properly you can go into these sections here for example I can go into my messages here and I see two recommendations so I can auto delete old conversations and I can review large attachments basically if I go in here I can actually edit these attachments and remove any videos and photos and things that people have sent me throughout the years basically 
quickly and I can go ahead and remove those directly from my iPhone creating more storage as you can see if I delete them all I get about a gig and a half or so back onto my iPhone storage same thing applies here for deleting old conversations I can get up to two gigs so I can go in here and I can enable this option and right away it will give me back two to three gigs just by simply tapping into these two options here messages is one of those things that takes up a lot of storage especially if you have an iPhone for more than two to three years there's a lot of messages a lot of attachments which includes videos and photos that could give you a lot of storage back if you simply enable those two options under the iPhone storage option so yeah if you're looking to get more storage on your iPhone that's one of the things you can do another thing you can actually do is go through your iPhone and find those Apple applications these are apps that a lot of users don't even really use so if you're not using the podcast application for example let me show you here let's go into settings let's go into general and then let's go into the about right now I have available uh, 100 or actually I have 60 gigabytes left out of 128 so 60 gigs left so if I go into these apps Apple apps right here that I don't use for example as I mentioned let's say you don't use the podcast I can delete the podcast application and this will give me storage back onto my iPhone so I had 60 gigs available if I go back now now I have 64 gigs available of storage on my iPhone and you can continue doing this you can delete all these apps here that you don't use so for example if you don't use the free form application from Apple which is a new application that Apple has added to their suite of applications you can actually delete that application as well and just continue deleting Apple apps that are currently installed on your iPhone that you may not be using maybe separate on a folder somewhere this will create more storage and free up some of that storage on your iPhone as well and there you guys have it these are some of the tips and recommendations in order to get a better user experience better performance of your iPhone guaranteed again this is part two check out part one links will be down below I hope you guys enjoy the video and have a great day I'll see you on the next one peace